Metaprogramming is popular in many languages, and it's frequently used for tasks like object relational mapping, dependency injections, and other forms of aspect-oriented programming. Whether you're a fan of these kind of extensions to the language or not, their increasing popularity means that you'll have to deal with the use case of metaprogramming sooner or later. So having tools that support metaprogramming efficiently is super important. Hello everyone, my name is Jeffrey van Gogh. I'm an engineering manager on the Android Studio team at Google. In this video, we'll talk about Kotlin Symbol Processing, a new way to do metaprogramming in Kotlin. I'll start with an overview of KSP and why we build it. After which, my coworker Ting Yuan will go into more details on how to use third-party Kotlin Symbol Processors and how to write your own Kotlin Symbol Processor. Why did we build KSP? Kotlin already supports several forms of metaprogramming. The most well-known form is through a system it inherited from the Java ecosystem, annotation processing. While annotation processing allowed for easy migration from the Java programming language, it comes with some costs. It operates on constructs of the Java programming language, meaning that Kotlin-specific features such as properties, top-level functions, etc. are not modeled. Next to this, in order to bridge between Kotlin and the Java world, the build toolchain has to perform some elegant tricks to make the integration work, which leads to build performance issues as well as sometimes confusing error messages. Finally, as annotation processors are tied to the Java ecosystems, these don't work with other ecosystems that Kotlin targets, such as JavaScript and native. Another form of metaprogramming in the Kotlin ecosystem is through compiler plugins. These plugins allow developers to make many changes to the behavior of the language and generated code. While powerful, this solution has some downsides as well. First of all, the compiler APIs are not guaranteed to be stable and most likely won't be for a while. At the same time, using these APIs requires an in-depth understanding of compiler technologies and the specific implementation of the Kotlin compiler. Finally, the compiler API allows users to modify existing code, making it harder for developers to reason about their source, and certain usages could make it harder to do incremental compilation. With all these limitations in mind, we wanted to make it easier for people that had a need for metaprogramming to do so in a way that relates to the Kotlin language, works for all environments that Kotlin targets, is as efficient as possible, and supports Kotlin's Java interoperability. An additional restriction that we imposed on ourselves is that we wanted to make it relatively easy for existing Java annotation processors to migrate to KSP. Considering all of this, we designed an API where processor authors have read-only access to all of Kotlin symbols through an API that closely resembles Kotlin's grammar. This information can be used to generate additional code and or diagnostics, and processors can even work together and run in multiple rounds of code generation. There is one important limitation, however. Processors cannot modify existing code. By making our API as lazy as possible, monitoring changes closely, and avoiding calls to the Java compiler, we're seeing improvements of processors like Boom of up to two times when switching to KSP. KSP is fully integrated with the Gradle build system, and the command line version is available to integrate into other build systems. I'll hand it over to Ting Yuan to show you how to use an existing processor written in KSP, as well as how to write your own Kotlin symbol processor. Thanks, Jeffrey. I'm Ting Yuan Huang the tech lead for Kotlin Simple Processing at Google. Let's dive right into some code examples on how to use a processor written in KSP. Applying KSP is about as easy as applying annotation processors. First, the KSP Gradle plugin is hosted on Maven Central, so we have to tell Gradle to search in Maven Central when applying the plugins. Next in the project or subproject where sources are intended to be processed before compilation, apply KSP and specify the processor. Note that each KSP version is tied to an exact Kotlin compiler version. This is why KSP's version stream has a Kotlin version in it. Note that only KSP's version needs to match the compiler. Processors are backward compatible and older KSP processors will work with new KSP implementations and newer Kotlin compilers. And that's it. The only real difference is having to add the repository for KSP Gradle plugin. Several processors already support KSP and more are under development. Please check Google slash KSP for an updated list as support is constantly growing. Next, let's talk about the API design of KSP and how to write a processor with KSP. We mentioned that one of the design goals of KSP is to support Kotlin naturally. As such, KSP's interface is 
or data structures are modeled after Kotlin's grammar. If you are familiar with Kotlin, you should be able to use Caspi's API with relative ease. Caspi's API allows processors to navigate through the language constructs. For example, member functions can be obtained from their containing classes. Top-level functions, classes, and properties are available through a file. You can also get a classes containing file or containing class if it's nested. Here are a few examples. A class file can have annotations, declarations, as well as package name and file name. In CASB, references to types are designed to be resolved by processors explicitly because type resolution is one of the most expensive operations in the Kotlin compiler. Much of the information is actually available without resolution. For example, type arguments can be obtained from a CAS reference element. Processors should resolve types only if they need information from CAS declaration or CAS type. When a type is referenced, such as CAS function declaration dot return type, or CAS annotation dot annotation type, it is always a CAS type reference. This is intentionally designed, favoring avoiding resolution cost over easy access to declaration details. Again, a processor should only resolve a reference when it is necessary. For simplicity and efficiency, no modifications to existing code are allowed in processors. Instead, processors are supposed to generate new files which will be compiled together with the input source later. There is also no expression label information available to processors. All that processors can see or examine are the structures of the classes and the signatures of functions. The only exception is expressions in annotations. They are guaranteed to be compile time constants and are always available to processors as constants. Let's take a look at a concrete example of how to write a processor. Please know that you will only need the simple processing API package. Simple processor provider is the interface to instantiate your implementation of simple processor, which will be covered in the next slide. This is separated from simple processor so that you can, for example, instantiate and initialize simple processors with more freedom by yourself. Let's write a processor to collect all functions. The only thing you need to override is the process function. Let's retrieve all input files from the resolver and pass the files to the find functions visitor. After all the files are visited, the functions will be stored in the functions list. As you may have already noticed, the resolver is key and can be seen as the entry point of the API. Like many other compiler-related APIs, KSP supports the visitor pattern, allowing you to examine each element in an object-oriented way without having to check their types at runtime. In this example, we visit the declarations recursively to collect functions. Cas class declaration and cas file are declaration containers, and therefore we have get declared functions or declarations on them to get the functions or declarations recursively. Besides the cas top-down visitor, there are also other visitors like cas default visitor that can be used in place of polymorphism in some cases. Resolver is the entry point of the functionalities provided by CASB. The first line of most processors is likely calling some functions in Resolver. For example, get all files can be called to get everything that is subject to processing. Other entry points including get symbols with annotation, where you can specify the fully qualified name of an annotation and get all symbols with let annotation. You can also call get class declaration by name 
with the fully qualified name of the class in question, and the class will be returned to you if it exists. One interesting feature of CASP is that it supports type checking and type substitution, which means that you can create new types by substituting their type arguments. You can also check whether a type is assignable to the other, or try to see whether a type overrides the other. Therefore, Resolver provides functions to create type arguments and type references. CASP also has common built-in types conveniently available should you need to check or use them. There are a few other useful features of CASP we won't cover in depth. The first is code generator, which is used to generate files. There is also a CASP logger, should you need to print messages. Users of processors can pass options to processors from Gradle or command line. Processors can also access Kotlin language versions for the current compilation. Let's talk about the relation between CASP API, CASP implementation, and the underlying Kotlin compiler. Roughly speaking, CASP comprises two parts, API and implementation. The API is independent. It rarely changes and is backward compatible. There can be new interfaces, but old interfaces never change. On the other hand, each release of CASP implementation is tied to a specific compiler version because CASP implementation encodes the compiler internals, which is the reason why the CASP version string has a Kotlin version in it. Processors only depend on API and therefore are not tied to compiler versions. Users of processors need to upgrade the CASP version when upgrading the compiler version in their project. Note that they don't need to upgrade the processor's version because processors only depend on API. For example, some nice process 2.0 is released and tested with CASP 1.530.100. Users can expect that the same some nice processor 2.0 will work with Kotlin 1.6 and CASP releases for Kotlin 1.6. When writing a processor, all you need is simple processing API. When users apply CASP and specify your processor in the CASP configuration, the CASP Gradle plugin will find the correct CASP implementation and load your processor. As such, when writing processors, you should only depend on simple processing API and should avoid depending on the CASP implementation. Otherwise, it will very likely be broken after a few compiler upgrades. The most important thing on CASP's roadmap is keeping up with newer compiler changes. We have been releasing updates to support the new compiler releases within a couple of days after the new compilers become available since 1.4.10. Of course, bug fixes are one of our highest priorities. Next on the list is supporting the new Kotlin front-end compiler, now known as K2. We are aiming at making CASP ready on the first day the new Kotlin front-end compiler becomes available. Exploring and expanding support for multi-platform is also one of the items on our roadmap. For example, starting the various use cases and defining and implementing the details of how to run CASP on a subset of targets and how to share computations between them. Of course, there are always additional optimizations to be done, so we will keep a close eye on performance. We need your feedback to decide where to invest further. Please give CASP a try and tell us what you think. You can find many details on Google slash CASP, including a guide for Java annotation processor authors, details about incremental processing, the behavior of multiple run, and an FAQ. You can also find an overview of the API as a class diagram. 
please feel free to ask questions or give feedback in the CASB channel on kathleenlen.slack.com or file issues on the GitHub page. Thank you.